So if you like the content of this video, <laughs> like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And be sure to get your free 19 business courses. When you start in your business, everybody wants to be paid. But have you prepared yourself to be paid? Something to think about. Because you're thinking, I'll hustle, I'll do what I need to do, I'll get that cash, maybe I'll get a check. How you set up your corporation, how you set up your payment systems could actually limit your income. Teach you how to set up your payment systems, which way to go, whether you're a sole proprietor or you're starting a corporation in this video. Be sure to get your free 19 business and life skill courses first link below that's right hustlers kung fu life skills .com, baby I have a lot of people who are in the service business sector that don't like taking credit cards now I'm gonna tell you my credit card story and why I didn't have just one merchant account but four I remember we were doing eBay, Amazon, and this was when we were first opening up the physical locations. And the lady comes into the flea market. I had this snazzy ass unit. I mean, leopard print, club chair, love seat, sofa. I wish I had taken a picture because I've not seen anything like this since. Lady comes in. Oh my God. Oh my God. I got to have it. And she's like, I don't have the cash, but, you know, I've got the credit on my card. Well, you take credit cards, right? And the amount was like 1800 bucks, and they didn't want to do it up front. So I said, tell you what, let me run home. This is how primitive this shit was back then. I will send you a PayPal invoice. And what I'll do is put hold on this stuff. You pay me. I'll deliver it this was before I had my guys and everything and I was doing a lot of deliveries and she hugged me so tight my nipples got hard now it's like so I go home I send it she's home waiting because she hits it instantly call her up and it's like okay I'll be delivering it tonight no chargebacks nothing use PayPal of all things and I was like whoa so I started letting people know that we took credit cards and a lot of people were kind of like not feeling the PayPal thing back then. <laughs> yeah, kind of funny, I know. And then I went ahead and applied for a merchant account. <clears throat> now, let me tell you what it was like back then. You had to go through a credit. If you had bad credit back then, you weren't getting a merchant account. You didn't get instantaneous approval. And when you got your merchant account, you didn't get next day deposits. It was two to four days before you got your money. Yeah, I know primitive days primitive right and I, I saw our business grow this was one of the reasons that we were able to hang with quote the big dogs is because we were getting more money and we're getting better prices and we're getting it faster because his, whatever you think about credit cards and debt that's your opinion the truth of the matter is people spend more money buy faster when they're paying with a debit card or credit card I wish my lawn guy would take <laughs> a credit card but I write him a corporate check you know which he doesn't seem to have a problem with but it is really really important now let's go ahead and deal with the, the boogeyman in the room with credit cards when you take credit cards you will get chargebacks not a matter of if it's a matter of when it's going to happen part of business my opinion it is well worth the risk and it's well worth the hassle and when they happen. Because most people, 99.8% of folks, if you send them or sell them whatever they expect and they get it, you're good. There will be people you will give exactly what they want and they're still gonna do a chargeback. That's just how it goes, that's just how it is. But it's a very, very small percentage. Now, when you're setting up your business, it is a bad, bad ideal to set everything up as a sole proprietor. You can do all this as a sole proprietor, but I'm gonna give you the circles of risk. You go ahead and you incorporate. 
and you get that merchant account in the name of the corporation. They're gonna check your personal credit. It's part of the deal. But the merchant account, and they may make you sign a personal guarantee. <laughs> so that would invalidate any protections of the corporation. But you never know until you try. Uh, 2008 really fucked up a lot of things for a lot of people. But you go ahead and you get that corporate structure, you get your receipts and everything, and saying your corporate name on them and all that. Now, you want you know if you haven't watched the video where how you set up your corporate accounts, go back watch that video, and it will teach you how to set up your accounts in the case you do get a charge back. It does not start this wicked nasty chain of uh, bad uh, overage and fees because you're running too tight. Now, you, you go ahead and you do everything in the corporate name. Now, this is where shit gets snazzy. Really, really snazzy. You set up what's called a holding company. Not an operating company, but a holding company. And then that's going to be an S-Corp. Or that's going to be an LLC. Or it'll be an S-Corp, LLC, LLC. But you're going to have a holding company. Now, the holding company collects money. It does not do business with anybody. Now, this is with the circle of risk. Since the holding company only collects money and doesn't do business with anybody, it can't be sued and it can't get caught up in anything because the way that it's set up, your LLCs pass through the money, but they don't pass through the risk. This is why you got to play this game. A lot of people are like, I don't want to do it. It's too much money, man. There's too many hassles. If you want to be an owner in America, this is how you play it. This is the template. This is the game. These are the rules. Now, what do I say? Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the motherfucking rules so you can win. These are the motherfucking rules. You set this shit up. You put yourself in a position where, unless you just do something grossly illegal, notice I said grossly, <laughs> nobody can get your money. Not even the Internal Revenue Service. Now, I know people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Once again, I, I'm in the group. I'm not going to say the name of the group. And people are posting how much they, got, they have to pay in overages on their taxes. And people are talking about their accountants and all this other bullshit. And I'm just like, you didn't get your corporate structure set up properly or you wouldn't have this problem. And I'm going to give you a scenario. Guy's well known. He's holding up a check. He's doing his thing about America and all this other stuff. Now, you don't pay any taxes unless you make a profit. That's how the code works, right? So if you make, you know, I'll just give it to you because all of this sets up with how you get paid. All of this is a direct chain. You set up an S Corp, right? Now you set up an S Corp, which you file like a C Corp, you publicize and everything. You can do an S Corp LLC election, but a company cannot own that LLC. It must only be members and see, you know, and founders and officers. But a company or a trust cannot own that LLC with the S Corp election. Very important distinction because you get that parent company, it can own so many things, and then you create these pass through entities that reduce your risk, reduce your exposure. All right, S Corp, put yourself on as an employee. Give yourself a reasonable salary. You're gonna pay taxes on that. You're gonna pay Medicare, all this stuff. You're gonna pay pay regular payroll taxes. You want to have the smallest salary as possible. Now, you know, if you're rolling and your company's doing 10 million and you're giving your salary of 50 grand, you're gonna get nailed by the Internal Revenue Service because that's just fucking ridiculous. Unless the company doesn't have any profits, you can get away with that. But let's just say your company's doing five million a year right and the profits like 50 percent so you pay yourself five hundred thousand you're gonna get hammered on that five hundred thousand but don't worry about that because you're going you're saving money in the long run so you get hammered on the five hundred thousand then your other money you're gonna get as dividends per quarter and only pay capital gains taxes on it. So, now, once again, with how this stuff is set up, if 
the money comes in and you spend it on retirement plans or company improvements because you could take a moderate salary, spend your money to improve your company, our employees, all this stuff, have to have this plan, and you can at the end of the year owe no fucking federal taxes or be somewhere like 10%, 12%, maybe 15%. I'm pausing because every time I see one of these people put some shit like this in their feed on Facebook, I'm going, aha, you didn't set this shit up properly. And you're teaching people how to get rich. What's the, no the number one rule to getting rich is the pre preservation of capital, which means you don't lose money. If you, could, if you never lost money and you only got six to 12% forever, you would eventually get rich because you didn't lose money. Taxes is losing money. Taking your money and building the company, the asset, to a point where it can pay you money, pay the taxes, and maintain tax efficiency is how you get rich in America. Not balling out, not having a Ferrari, not having a mansion, not leasing this stuff and playing, quote, the internet game. Because when I see this stuff, I know that people don't have proper business educations. Now, I will say that I was fortunate and I worked for a company. This is how I know that the S-Corp thing works before I did it, which was I worked for a company, dude's name was Scott. He got a check like the rest of us did. The three other owners, they got contributions and dividends. Warren, the CP, because whenever Warren would come in, Warren was a cool motherfucker. Warren would come in. Warren was like the Sparta. This is Sparta 300 kind of account. He was like on it. And whenever he would come, because my cubicle was next to Bob, and when and Warren would be there for an hour, and I was just like this. Listening, 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 listening. And that's how that company was set up. And I know they never got audited. and they ne none, none of this shit that, you know, people are like, well, you're going to get. No, 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 no. So what you say about taxes, I'm telling you, this is legal if you have a long-term plan. But if you're just on that short-term plan and you're trying to do internet pimping, yeah, this could be a problem. But if you got structure, you got a plan, and you're thinking about your, your estate and legacy, and you're playing the long game, you could play the short game and you can play the long game, then all this makes sense. Now, how does all of this what all of this has to do with setting up your merchant accounts? If you set it up correctly from jump, including the merchant account in a corporate situation, not a sole proprietor, not you running everything through your damn name. Uh, I've got someone who's renting property and he's a little shocked at the ringer they're putting him through. Uh, it's going to get harder. But see, once you establish this corporate entity and you file taxes and do all this stuff, three, four, five years from now, you could buy a house, you could buy a building, and shit just makes sense. But the longer you keep not, you know, trying to do the game, well, I'm not gonna get a merchant account, I'm not gonna file, you know, create an LLC, I'm not gonna do escort, I'm not gonna do all this stuff. The longer you put off getting wealthy. See, how you get paid is how you get paid. And I'm going to say that again for the slow people in the back of the bus. How you get paid is how you get paid. Hopefully. How you get paid is how you get paid. This is very, very simple, old school, well-proven, time-tested stuff that works. You don't want to make a lot of money. You want to take all of the money and either put it in retirement or other investments. And this is how I know Grant Cardone is a motherfucking legend. Grant never pulled out money. Grant could have been balling long before he was internet balling with the Rolls Royce and I, he could have did that a long time ago 
but he kept putting money into the asset. Now this is Grant's story, and this is something I think is beautiful. Grant right now is, he can never become unrich. Cause see, this is the thing. And you know, how you get paid is how you get paid. When you take the money out of the company and put it into a tax shelter, such as real estate or some kind of investment, then once your company shuts down, though that help that sheltered money, that haven money, it's still working for you. Uh, you know, a lot of people were talking shit about me because before I got the house, I was living in an apartment. Oh, I never lied about that because it didn't make sense at that time. Then when it made sense, that's when I did it. I didn't need that. Didn't want it because it's all about the asset and building the asset where the asset can make you money. Now, Grant has an estimated fortune of 350 million. You know, it's clear that it's six is, is you know, hundreds of millions. It's clear of his net worth. Now, what you can do with your business right now, even if you only make 150,000, and I'm gonna give you a scenario, because how you get paid is how you get paid. You make 150 with a job, you're gonna lose 68 off the rift. 68 to 75, boom. Not getting it back, may even have to pay more. Now, you own a business and you make 150. 50 G's could go into your SEP. Boom, off the riff, which reduces your taxable income to under six figures. Oh, wait a minute, you've got this, you've got these corporate fees, you've got these expenses. Oh shit, you're down to 25,000 taxable income. You see how the game is played? Don't be afraid to play the game, become educated. If anybody tells you that you know they make a lot of money and they're getting bent over, they're not playing the game. They're not playing the game well. From me to you, they're not playing the game. Anyone that's complaining about taxes and all of this other stuff, they got a shitty ass accountant and they're not playing the game and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. From me to you. Yeah, I said that. And that may, and that's gonna be some folks that you know and you've seen because you see me on YouTube and Facebook holding up a check talking about I'm getting bent over. I'm getting bent over, man. I'm not getting bent over and neither should you. It's how you get paid is how you get paid. And the sooner you start playing this game, the better at it you will be. Because how you set this stuff up will format your mind and it will also influence your decisions going forward. Do I get in this business? Uh, someone put up a video talking about they had to pay inventory taxes. Now, this person was talking, I'm like anyone that's owned the physical store knows about inventory taxes. So if you know inventory taxes are coming up, you got two choices. Liquidate all of that inventory, even at cost, because it's, cause this is what's gonna happen if you don't liquidate and get rid of that stuff and you have to pay taxes on it. Those taxes reduces the profitability of the inventory. Do you hear me? So you spent $50,000 on the inventory. Then you gotta turn around and pay another 12, 15 grand taxes on the inventory. So you didn't pay 50 grand for inventory. You now have paid 60 to $65,000 for inventory that you can only sell for 70. So you would be better off liquidating even at cost or slightly above cost to avoid those taxes. Ask me how I know. I've been in that fucking situation. I stayed up all fucking night figuring that shit out. I was like, because part of you is like, I, I know I can get this. But if you're not thinking a long game, you're not thinking, oh shit, that's a net loss, which is another deduction on my taxes. So instead of going from a situation to where you are paying, you know, $65,000 for inventory, you go ahead, you take the hit, you take the hit on the paper profit, and now that's a plus because now that deduction offsets profit, which puts more money in your fucking pocket. I'm getting upset because anytime someone compares me to one of these new wave rich folks, and when I see what they're talking about, I'm like, mm, 
some baby boy that ain't no 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 you hustling backwards so if you've got physical products and the tax year is about to come up in 2006 liquidate get rid of it sell it taking that loss this is why you gotta have an accountant this is why you gotta have a fucking team so you know this shit and you play the game because how you get paid is how you get paid so go ahead and incorporate get your merchant account start taking credit cards get yourself two or three merchant accounts play them against each other uh, there are certain things that open up after you get to a certain volume there are some that will give you what's called a, a merchant account loan where they'll just forward you 50 20 50 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars just like boom and then they're going to take out proceeds out of your your daily proceeds they're going to take out the the, the 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 loan repayments out of your proceeds it's kind of like uh, PayPal working capital Amazon loans I mean and, oh let's talk about that people are like don't get it don't go in debt okay if someone's going to give you let's say fifteen thousand dollars in the fees for the payback is like a grand or more, maybe 1200 bucks. Take the fucking money, even if you don't need it. Take the fucking money. If you don't need it, put it in an account and pay back that loan with the money. Yes, it will cost you to do this. Now, why would you do this? How you get paid is how you get paid. Because if you do this two, three, four, five, six times when you really need the money, you're already established, you've already triggered their algorithm, and they're gonna throw even more money at you when you really need it. All of this stuff, don't take it. Don't take it. Don't avoid debt. Stay fucking poor. Stay unwealthy. This is how the game is played. How you get paid is how you get paid. Don't listen to these folks. They're scared little bitches who are for some reason are worried that taking their legally guaranteed right to run their business in an ethical and legal manner and take proper deductions is somehow scammy. Because they, they're punks. They're bitches. They're like that scared little cat. You go to pet it and it's like, ah, it pees on itself because it thinks you're going to do something to it even though you were trying to do something good for it. Don't listen to these folks. Start playing the game to become wealthy. So get that merchant account. Get that LLC. If you don't have the money for an account, there are books. It's boring. I was fortunate that my business partner was an accountant. This is how I lot and this is how I know a lot of this shit because she set it up where we would not lose. Get to know if your accountant is a pussy, fire him or her and get yourself one of those worn fucking sharks. They exist. They exist. So if you like the content of this video, <laughs> like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And be sure to get your free 19 business courses. If you set it up correctly from jump, including the merchant account in a corporate situation, not a sole proprietor, not you running everything through your damn name. Uh, I've got someone who's renting property and he's a little shocked at the ringer they're putting him through. Uh, it's going to get harder. But see, once you establish this corporate entity and you file taxes and do all this stuff, three, four, five years from now, you could buy a house, you could buy a building, and shit just makes sense. But the longer you keep not, you know, trying to do the game, well, I'm not going to get a merchant account, I'm not going to file, you know, create an LLC, I'm not going to do escort, I'm not going to do all this stuff. The longer you put off getting wealthy. See, how you get paid is how you get paid. And I'll say that again for the slow people in the back of the bus. How you get paid is how you get paid. How you get paid is how you get paid. This is very, very simple, old school, well-proven, time-tested stuff that works. You don't want to make a lot of money. You want to take all of the money and either put it in retirement or other investments. 
And this is how I know Grant Cardone is a motherfucking legend. Grant never pulled out money. Grant could have been balling long before he was internet balling with the Rolls Royce and that. He could have did that a long time ago. But he kept putting money into the asset. Now this is Grant's story and this is something I think is beautiful. Grant right now is he can never become unrich. Because see this is the thing. And you know how you get paid is how you get paid. When you take the money out of the company and put it into a tax shelter such as real estate or some kind of investment then once your company shuts down though that help that sheltered money that haven money it's still working for you uh you know a lot of people were talking shit about me because before i got the house i was living in an apartment oh i never lied about that because it didn't make sense at that time. Then when it made sense, that's when I did it. I didn't need that. Didn't want it because it's all about the asset and building the asset where the asset can make you money. Now, Grant has an estimated fortune of 350 million. You know, it's clear that it's six, it's, it's you know, hundreds of millions. It's clear of his net worth. Now, what you can do with your business right now, even if you only make 150,000, and I'm gonna give you a scenario, because how you get paid is how you get paid. You make 150 with a job, you're gonna lose 68 off the rift. 68 to 75, boom. Not getting it back, may even have to pay more. Now, you own a business and you make 150. 50 Gs could go into your SEP boom off the riff which reduces your taxable income to under six figures oh wait a minute you've got this you've got these corporate fees you've got these expenses oh shit you're down to twenty five thousand taxable income you see how the game is played don't be afraid to play the game become educated if anybody tells you that you know they make a lot of money and they're getting bent over they're not playing the game. They're not playing the game well. From me to you, they're not playing the game. Anyone that's complaining about taxes and all of this other stuff, they got a shitty ass accountant and they're not playing the game and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. From me to you. Yeah, I said that. And that may and that's gonna be some folks that you know and you've seen because you see me on YouTube. And Facebook holding up a check talking about I'm getting bent over. I'm getting bent over, man. I'm not getting bent over, and neither should you. It's how you get paid is how you get paid. And the sooner you start playing this game, the better at it you will be. Because how you set this stuff up will format your mind and it will also influence your decisions going forward. Do I get in this business? Uh, someone put up a video talking about they had to pay inventory taxes. Now, this person was talking, I'm like, anyone that's owned the physical store knows about inventory taxes. So if you know inventory taxes are coming up, you got two choices. Liquidate all of that inventory, even at cost, because it's, cause this is what's gonna happen if you don't liquidate and get rid of that stuff and you have to pay taxes on it. Those taxes reduces the profitability of the inventory. Do you hear me? So you spent $50,000 on the inventory. Then you got to turn around and pay another 12, 15 grand taxes on the inventory. So you didn't pay 50 grand for inventory. You now have paid 60 to $65,000 for inventory that you can only sell for 70. So you would be better off liquidating even at cost or slightly above cost to avoid those taxes. Ask me how I know. I've been in that fucking situation. I stayed up all fucking night figuring that shit out. I was like, because part of you is like, I, I know I can get this. But if you're not thinking a long game, you're not thinking, oh shit, that's a net loss, which is another deduction on my taxes. So instead of going from a situation to where you are paying, you know, $65,000 for inventory, you go ahead, you take the hit, you take the hit on the paper profit, and now, 
that's a plus because now that deduction offsets profit which puts more money in your fucking pocket I'm getting upset because anytime someone compares me to one of these new wave rich folks and when I see what they're talking about I'm like mm, baby boy that ain't no 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 you hustling backwards so if you've got physical products and the tax year is about to come up in 2006, liquidate, get rid of it, sell it, take a net loss. This is why you gotta have an accountant. This is why you gotta have a fucking team. So you know this shit. And you play the game. Cause how you get paid is how you get paid. So go ahead and incorporate. Get your merchant account. Start taking credit cards. Get yourself two or three merchant accounts. Play them against each other. Uh, there are certain things that open up after you get to a certain volume. There are some that will give you what's called a, a merchant account loan where they'll just forward you 50, 20, 50, 50 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars. Just like boom. And then they're going to take out proceeds out of your your daily proceeds. They're going to take out the the, 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 the loan repayments out of your proceeds. It's kind of like uh, PayPal working capital, Amazon loans. I mean, and it, oh, let's talk about that. People are like, don't get it. Don't go in debt. Okay, if someone's gonna give you, let's say, $15,000 in the fees for the payback is like a grand or more, maybe 1200 bucks, take the fucking money. Even if you don't need it, take the fucking money. If you don't need it, put it in an account and pay back that loan with the money. Yes, it will cost you to do this. Now, why would you do this? How you get paid is how you get paid. Because if you do this two, three, four, five, six times when you really need the money, you're already established, you've already triggered their algorithm, and they're gonna throw even more money at you when you really need it. All of this stuff, don't take it. Don't take it. Don't avoid debt. Stay fucking poor. Stay unwealthy. This is how the game is played. How you get paid is how you get paid. Don't listen to these folks. They're scared little bitches who are for some reason are worried that taking their legally guaranteed right to run their business in an ethical and legal manner and take proper deductions is somehow scammy. Because they, they're punks. They're bitches. They're like that scared little cat. You go to pet it and it's like, ah, it pees on itself because it thinks you're going to do something to it even though you were trying to do something good for it. Don't listen to these folks. Start playing the game to become wealthy. So get that merchant account. Get that LLC. If you don't have the money for an account, there are books. It's boring. I was fortunate that my business partner was an accountant. This is how a lot, and this is how I know a lot of this shit because she set it up where we would not lose. Get to know if your accountant is a pussy, fire him or her and get yourself one of those worn fucking sharks. They exist. They exist. So if you like the content of this video, <laughs> like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And be sure to get your free 19 business courses.